Well, you know, I think particularly within this world, a world of an action film, it's very important that the movie be sound and solid, that the foundation of it um, feel like there was, there's enough for you to hang a character's, you know, your character's hat on. And this was just, it worked from the second that I read it. Not only do I have I wanted to work with Michael Bay for a long time, actually, and his movies really excite me, and they just feel like fun. I was, he wrote me, sent me the script, and he said, read it, I think it's good, but I mean, you know, we'll play around with it, you know? And I was like, this, this works, this works. And it, and it really moved me. And I, uh, I was so down for some fun. So um, all those, all those pieces. Um, I think Michael may have said to me, yeah, I was almost not gonna do it, then you said you wanna do it, so I guess we're gonna do it, you know? So I was like, oh, cool. Um, but I think that uh, all of those elements. Um, Danny Sharp is a complex uh, human being in that I think his intentions are um, that he grew up in a family where, you know, bank robberies and heists were sort of uh, normal, which is, sounds crazy, but it was true. And um, grew up with his brother, Will, um, who is an adopted brother. Uh, and really they were, you know, like so, so, so close. And I think growing up in a family, there was so much chaos probably and, and, and discomfort. I think they found a lot of comfort with each other. And so um, in the years that have preceded Will leaving and them both growing up, they've, they've separated in a lot of ways and don't stay in touch. And I think Danny is probably desperate for a connection and the love of his brother and the support of that. And so I think he's a character that is conflicted, you know, um, is used to doing one thing. That one thing happens to be bank robberies and robberies. Um, but I think his intention is to try and connect and he loves his brother very much. So he's a, he's a complicated character, one that I think is loving, but a little bit misunderstanding about, misunderstood and misunderstanding about what that love is and how to how to put that into action, you know? Don't rob banks. Um, I just like how, like, sort of mad he is, you know? I mean, there, you know, I, I, I like the idea of putting three different characters with different intentions in one very small space, going hundreds of miles an hour, um, adds a particular kind of, um, I don't know, uh, there's a, something really fun about that. Um, I I think he's a whole lot of fun. I think he's unpredictable, um, which I always love in characters, and I always think leaves so much room because not only is he unpredictable in what he's going to do in the big story sense, he's also unpredictable moment to moment in scenes, so you can make a lot of different choices. Um, I love the idea of an audience feeling like they know a character and then realizing that they they were wrong. So I I... I love playing within that world, and that's what Danny, Danny is. Yeah, I mean, you know, Will comes to Danny because he needs help. Um, he's struggling, and you know, his wife is sick, and his he just needs to take care of his family, and he's been pushed to the edge. And um, Danny is his only choice, you know, his only hope. And uh, Danny wants to help. He loves his brother, and um, and so the choice to go after this money is, you know, with the intention of making sure that a system that was not allowing for his brother to, you know, help his family at all, just like tied his hands and everything behind his back um, to kind of break that system. And, um, and so the intentions between the two of them is to go rob this bank because he wants to help his brother. Um, he also has other intentions, but, uh, <laughs> but I think ultimately, that's what drives the whole film. And in the end, you know, they get into a whole lot of trouble. Um, and it becomes a moral tale, really, about what you do when your intentions are good, but everything goes wrong. Well, I mean, Yaya is lovable, you know? I mean, he just is as a person, and uh, he's, a, he's an actor who is curious and is always asking questions in the same way that I do. So there was a simpatico in terms of how we always approach things. We're kind of always looking for a deeper we want something deeper, we're asking a different question. And that was fun because I think it's possible 
in a movie like this to not ask those questions and to just go through. But I think both of us knew that the more we asked those questions and dug deep together, the more interesting the movie would be. And, you know, for an actor um, like him, at, you know, the space he is in his career, you know, to have those intentions and to fight for them, I'm, I just adore that. And he's just got such a wonderful energy. It's positive and loving and um, that's like, frankly, nowadays, that's what matters. <laughs> so um, I, I adored working with them. Well, they're desperate, in a desperate moment, um, looking for a way out. Uh, got themselves in a whole load of shiz, and, uh, and they uh, somehow have a run-in with an ambulance, um, and their only way out is getting in that ambulance. Um, and so they hop on, and there you meet Asa Gonzalez's character, and um, now they're stuck with this, you know, first responder with her intentions and their intentions. And that's really when the movie just like turbocharges and um, it becomes a whole different story. I mean, a story I think about, um, just it's just one, it's wonderful because you're watching three different people with three different reasons to get where they're going, all opposing each other. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think when you meet Cam, there's a wonderful scene at the beginning of the movie that Asa is fantastic in. There's a little girl and who's wonderful in it too. Um, and you realize that she's someone who is also struggling with um, having an emotional connection with all these very hard things she has to do as a first responder. Um, and I think she, over time, the course of the movie, starts to realize that human beings are pretty profoundly complex and full of nuance. And as a first responder in emergencies, I think there's a lot of nuance in the job and the technicalities, but there's one goal and it's very straightforward and that is save the person. Um, and over time, I think you start to see that she starts to make a relationship with both of these brothers. And over the, her making a relationship with them, she sort of becomes the ballast by which the whole movie can rest itself on. And you start to see through her eyes that, you know, good or bad, you know, you can care about everyone. And I love, um, I really love the ending of the film. Um, and I really think it's so different for a Michael Bay movie. And I think Ace is incredible. The injured cop in that space was injured because of a mistake that he made in wanting to get away. So there's all these moral questions that happen, you know, that I think were, that are underneath all of it, really, really interesting. It, in the end, is someone's fault, but it is sort of everyone's fault in a way, too, and no one's fault. And that's what makes the movie so interesting. No, and I, and I, and I think... Um, as he gets pushed and as people want to hurt him and his brother and Cam and, you know, he starts to feel for them and then has to defend them. And that's when things become very complicated, you know, in the decision. I mean, yeah, I mean, what I think what I love about Danny as a character is that he says throughout the entire thing, don't hurt anyone. Like he constantly says, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Now it would seem, you know, confusing because why would you rob a bank with weapons if you weren't gonna do that? But I think the intention is always clear why he wanted to do it. But he's always saying, I don't wanna just, I don't wanna hurt anybody, I don't wanna hurt anybody, you know? But it's very complicated. Um, I didn't know that Asa was in the, the, uh, uh, the <laughs> Spirit Untamed until we were like three quarters of the way through shooting this movie. Um, it was, uh, <laughs> and, and and I don't even know if she she may have told me maybe but then I didn't realize what a beautiful singing voice she has uh, until then, um, and you know I think uh, yeah so we didn't really have a we didn't really have a whole we didn't really we play I think we played um, a married animated couple that never met because her character unfortunately dies at the beginning of the movie and uh, my character then it's 
you know, it's complicated. But uh, so we never had any scenes together um, until until we were in a Michael Bay movie where we were basically like on top of each other and each other's faces all the time, um, and uh, <laughs> at a hundred miles an hour. So. Uh, it was, we had a good time, we had a good time. They were like, uh, we had a good time getting thrown around uh, in a, a vehicle with sharp edges. I, th I, you know, I think shooting a film in the confines of, of an ambulance uh, is nothing in comparison to uh, a first responder EMT doing their job on a daily, nightly basis, moment by moment. Um, at faster speeds. I mean, it is a, you know, there are sharp edges everywhere. There are wires hanging everywhere. I mean, obviously there's many things at your disposal to use to help save somebody's life. But, um, you know, if, I mean, I found, I found it to be so interesting when I tried to think about the reality of someone doing a job like that in a space like that. It's awe-inspiring. I mean, I think Michael is um, is someone like many of the great directors I've worked with who uh, is searching for what feels alive, you know, what feels present and alive. And he has a different technique from other directors I've worked with. He's shooting with extraordinary operators on, you know, a minimum of three cameras in almost every setup and gives himself the agility to capture moments and and improv and change and move around. And I think that energy is infectious in his movies. That's what makes them so alive. But you can start a scene with Michael thinking that it's about one thing. And if there's an actor in the scene, maybe the act scene is about their character, but the other actors bringing a different kind of energy that he's drawn to, the scene will become about the actor who is bringing the energy that's alive. And I think that is the same with any filmmaker that of, of great stature um, that I've worked with. Like, they're looking for moments that feel truly alive. Um, Michael generates them and also is just desperate for them. I, I adored acting for Michael. There was no space that was off limits um, in the emotional world. And, um, you know, and he's very upfront and he's very direct and he's very clear. And I, I think as an actor, you start to appreciate that. Sometimes you just want slower, faster, right, left, and you get what they're trying to say. Simplicity of a comment can can open up worlds, and Michael's like that. And most of the great directors I've worked with are like that too. Yeah, I, I was really moved by the movie. I, I was surprisingly moved by the movie. I think it's um. I think it's what I felt when I first read the script. I thought this has a potential to have those feelings in it, and they are in the movie, and. I love who becomes the hero in the end, the rightful hero in the end. And um, I was really moved. Yeah, I think that there, you know, I think, I think that there is a conversation in the film that's so important and so interesting, which is that, um, you know, these, these, two, these two people, these two brothers, who from the outside in a certain narrative would look like they're the bad guys. Their intentions and why they do this and what they're doing it for um, is about communicating to a system that they have been just overwhelmed by, where they are powerless in. And I think that's why Danny says in the end, we are not the bad guys. Because I think he feels like, um, look at what these systems did to his brother when he's, you know, and and it's not the right way of responding, but uh, I understand his argument somewhere. Oh man, I, I, you know, I was filming a movie in Los Angeles in October of 2020 when Michael sent me the screenplay for this. And he said, I wanna shoot this movie, I wanna shoot it really quick, uh, and we're gonna make it for less, I've never made a movie for this little money, uh, and this, this, like, this many days, it's crazy, but I'm gonna do it. Um, and. What I loved was it's a film that pushed everyone, but particularly pushed Michael Bay in a space where um, he really had to prove himself um, in a different way, which was he had limited time, he had a limited budget for him. Um, for me, it wasn't limited. Um, one of the bigger films I've ever been in. But, um, uh, and 
and I think also doing it in a time when I think all of us in the film industry uh, were worried about when people would get to make movies again, uh, to watch a crew and everyone be excited to be working together again. And um, in Los Angeles, which is sort of the um, epicenter, at least of Hollywood, you know, um, to make a movie there was thrilling. And uh, I had a, a great time. I think my, my first intention coming onto this project was to have fun, to bring fun to people watching it and to have fun myself. And I think we've succeeded at that. I definitely did.